Imagine you're a gambler and the stakes couldn't be higher. If you get it right, you are saved. If you get it wrong, you go to hell for eternity. The question at hand, does God exist? Your bet, to believe or not to believe. Now, before you place your wager, consider this. Our belief systems, our faiths, our convictions, they're all influenced by a myriad of factors. But have you ever thought about the role of probability in these systems? Enter the mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal, who proposed a probabilistic argument for belief in God, known as Pascal's Wager. It's a fascinating concept, one that uses the language of odds and stakes, of gains and losses, to discuss something as profound as faith. It's like a cosmic roulette, where the chips are your beliefs, and the spinning wheel is the universe itself. So, you might ask, what are the odds? That's where Pascal's wager comes into play. Blaise Pascal, a 17th century mathematician, proposed a fascinating wager. He asked, isn't it more beneficial to believe in God, even if there's a chance he doesn't exist? This is the foundation of Pascal's wager a thought experiment that uses the concept of probability to argue for belief in God. Here's how it works. Pascal presents us with four possible scenarios. First, you believe in God, and God exists. The result? An infinite reward, eternal life in heaven. Second, you believe in God, and God doesn't exist. In this case, you lose nothing. You've lived a life guided by faith and moral principles. Third, you don't believe in God, and God doesn't exist. Again, you lose nothing, but you also gain nothing. Finally, you don't believe in God, and yet God exists. The consequence here could be dire, an infinite loss, eternal damnation. By weighing these outcomes, Pascal argues that the rational choice is to believe in God. After all, the potential for an infinite reward outweighs any finite loss. It's a bet where the stakes are high, and the best odds are on belief. But as with any wager, there are complications. The dice, you see, are not so simply cast. Enter the paradox of plurality. With many religions each claiming exclusive truth, how does one pick the right one? This quandary introduces a layer of complexity to Pascal's wager. Let's take a journey into the labyrinth of faith and probability, where each turn reveals a new challenge. In the world today, there are roughly 4,000 religions, each asserting its own path to salvation. Imagine the lottery. Your chance of winning is slim, and yet people play hoping to beat the odds. Being born into the right religion, if there is one, is a similar gamble. The chances are statistically slim, yet the stakes are arguably higher. We're talking about eternal salvation after all. This raises a poignant question. Is faith a product of geography and culture more than divine truth? If you were born in a different part of the world, would your faith be different? The societal and moral implications of this are profound. It suggests that belief systems are less about divine absolutes and more about human constructs, shaped by time, place, and circumstance. This is not to undermine faith, but to highlight the intricacies of its relationship with probability. It's a dance, where each step carries its own weight, its own risk, and its own potential reward. The reality is, Faith and probability share a complex dance in our quest for spiritual truth. In the end, Pascal's wager is not so much a definitive answer, but a thought-provoking proposition. It invites us to consider the intertwined complexities of faith, probability, and the human quest for spiritual truth. In this grand cosmic casino, Pascal suggests the stakes are too high not to bet on belief. Yet the multitude of faiths and their conflicting claims complicate the wager significantly. The choice ultimately lies within each individual's conviction. So, the question remains, will you place your bet? Or perhaps have you already?